at Drag Boss Garage. Welcome back to the channel for an exclusive that will blow your mind as it did mine. Let me tell you how it worked out. I get a message from a guy named Chauncey Polis from Hawaii, actually Oahu. And he tells me he watches my channel all the time and I said to myself, wow, in Hawaii. And then I look back at my analytics and I see that almost every country in the world at least watches a few episodes of Drag Boss Garage. So that impressed me. I just hit 19,000 subscribers and I appreciate it. It wouldn't be if it wasn't for you guys and gals. So thank you for watching my channel, liking and subscribing and keep this channel growing. What we're gonna present to you is a car that's been lost and out of sight for well over 20, 25 years. The car is Dino Don's 1979 Ford Fairmont Pro Stock car. So Chauncey told me that the story is that the car was crashed when it was a match racer. Let me give you just a brief synopsis. So the car was raced in 1979 by Dino Don. It didn't do a lot of races, maybe six or seven at NHRA, but it did a lot of match racing. And after that, the car was actually wrecked with a 516 match race motor. Now the car was built by Don Hardy. So I don't know if he fixed it. It really didn't have a lot of damage as the story goes because it landed on its roof and just slid down the track. So after Dino Don did that, the car was bought by a guy named Billy Takaki. Automastics in I think Honolulu, Hawaii. He raced it in, that's about 1980 for a few times. And then the story is that he kind of lost his money and he sold the car to his buddy, Charlie. Now, Charlie took the car and I don't think he ever raced it. He put it on jack stands and put it in his garage in Oahu. And there it sat for all these years. No one really saw it. Chauncey Polis, the guy that messaged me, said that he had heard where it might be. So he, he runs a pool cleaning business. So he started driving around looking for it. And one day he said he saw the tires from the garage door being up a little bit. Big meats back there. So he went in and he talked to a guy, a Japanese guy, he said he was in his 80s. And he said, yes, the guy had died and his widow lives here. So you could talk with her. Apparently he talked with her, struck up a deal. She said, just get the car out of here and everything else. So Chauncey bought the car. Chauncey only had the car a couple weeks and then he contacted me through Messenger. They've since then, they've cleaned up the car. It's a rolling chassis. As you'll see, there's no engine. No one knows what happened to the engine, but the car is otherwise complete. So he contacted Drag Boss Garage. He watches my channel. Thank you, Chauncey, that's impressive. And said, listen, I think this car needs to come back to the mainland. And I'm like, hell yeah, it does. So he kind of talked to me and we were kind of working on a deal. It was on Don Hardy race cars a few weeks ago and then he took it off and the cat's out of the bag. So I actually posted some stuff that I had been talking to him. A lot of guys want this car. He said people are driving by it now, scoping it out, mostly racers. The story is 18 years ago on Oahu, they closed the last drag strip. Now the Hawaiian Islands, I think there's, I thought there were seven of them from my memory. I don't know all their names. You were doing some research. How many islands did you find? 137 islands in Hawaii. What? 137 islands in Hawaii. Okay, well, the boss set says there's 137 islands in the Hawaiian Islands. So the main ones that we think about, I think there's seven of the main ones that we always talk about. So it's a whole string of islands. And what's happening is a lot of people from the mainland, mostly wealthy people, are moving to Hawaii and the associated islands that we're talking about, the bigger islands, buying up all the land. And what they're doing is overpricing Hawaii. So the locals are actually have to move out. Chauncey told me that a lot of his friends have actually moved to Vegas and other areas around because they can't afford to live on that island. Everything is so expensive. Everything has to come from the mainland for the most part. So there's no more racing there. So a lot of guys on that island are gonna watch this video. Got a lot of race cars in your car, in your garages. So now's the time to start figuring out what you're gonna do with them. 
lot of guys like to buy old race cars, as I would. So I had talked with Chauncey. He's been a racer for many years, as his kids are. I'll show up, put some pictures and videos of their cars and engines. He has a, a they have a rail, they have a, a sand buggy, a sand truck. Um, he's got a 400 based Ford engine with high port heads on it that runs on alcohol. And he was thinking about putting that in the car because it doesn't have an engine. But I said, hey, I think we could accommodate an engine around here. We got plenty of parts to build a high port Cleveland. So if everything goes well, we may end up with a car. May have to put up a GoFundMe. No, no, we do that. <laughs> but I might have to sell some things to try to raise the money. But let's look at the video. I appreciate Izzy coming in and helping me with the video. What did you tell me if I got that car? I'd be surprised if you got it. Well, yeah, you said that. So what else did you say? I said I'll help you work on it. You did? You heard it, guys. That means you're going to be out in Drag Boss Garage more. Maybe the other boss, Satellina. That's what we got to do. Oh, hi, Elena. Oh, hi, Dad. You better hurry up and get this video because we're almost finished. Hello. So here's Elena, the boss set. So oh, she, she was busy. She went to the store with Mrs. Drag Boss. So she just got back. So we're just talking about that car from Hawaii. Actually, Oahu. Wahoo. So, Oahu. Woohoo. That's it, baby. So let's watch the video and enjoy it and go back in time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Drag Boss Garage. You know Don's 79 Ford Fairmont has never been seen in 25 years. Here's the original Superstock magazine from October of 78 where it talks about the car. Coming off the trailer at Suffolk's. It ran 868 at 154. Now, the car itself was not raced a lot of times. It may have been raced six or seven times in NHRA, but did a lot of match racing. So let's look at the history of this car. There's John Cozzi and Dino Don, a dynamic duo. This is the only video I could find when he raced Bob Glidden at the 79 Winter Nationals. This is pure pro stock history. Bring off in the run we're about to see. Nicholson, 51 years of age in the far lane. Bob Glidden is in the near lane. Glidden winning 33 out of 35, and it's a good start with Nicholson getting out first, but here comes Glidden halfway, and at the top end, and it's Glidden pulling it away. Bob Glidden continues his remarkable success in pro stock competition as he beats back the challenge of 51-year-old Don Nicholson. I love this picture of Dino and John. And John, when you watch this video, hopefully I can hook up with Cliff and you and we can do a live chat. But the car was painted in the traditional colors of Dino Don by Rusty Greer. Dino had been racing since the early 60s. And many guys might not have known this, but he was a family man for sure. That's his daughter, Cindy. And the story goes that he raced with his family, uh, Patty and Cindy. So here's the car in the pits. Great looking picture right there. Atlanta International Dragway. Again, another picture here with John Cozzi holding the car straight. And you can see in the corner the car you're going to see. Engine by John Cozzi. That looks like Indy. So he raced the car more in match racing than he did in NHR Pro Stock. Love the dual batteries and trunk. Looks like dual Holley fuel pumps. Look at the difference between the two years. Not a lot of difference. Try to compare the pictures to what it looks like now. See if you can find some differences. There's the dash tag. You know, with that 341 Cleveland running 850s at 155, which is about the norm for those cars back then. But the real key was his match race combination, which you're going to see a whole aspect of it based on the 494 Ford Can-Am engine. 516 cubic inches, which was pretty big back then. I like how he adapted the big block Chevy valve covers to the Ford 429 Super Cobra Jet heads. And his 429 had sleeve lifter bores. That almost looks like a early sheet metal intake. It's a pretty strong looking bottom end. I love the head work. Now that was done by Mullins and Company. 429 Super Cobra Jet heads, not a lot of intake work, but they were high ported like the 
351 Cleveland was. Pretty small combustion chamber. Now the pistons are from Vanola. And if you look, you can see the gas ports. And the story is that Dino Don placed those gas ports himself. There's some specs from the engine. You don't see a lot of specs on pro stock motors or match race motors for that. I like how they lighten that starter. wonder how much they gain there. But the story is that Danu Don was match racing the car and rolled it, crashed it. So the car was fixed and repaired, I guess, by Don Hardy. And a guy named Billy Takaki bought the car, and he lived in Hawaii. And he raced the Super Pinto. And you can see there's a probably a high-ported 351 Cleveland in that Pinto. And a picture of his, looks like a son. But the car was rolled, Billy Takaki bought it, and raced it throughout the tracks of the Hawaiian Islands. Here it is at the 1980 Autorama. It had two sets of doors, fiberglass and steel. Look at that, engine by John Kazi. So here's the car before Chauncey and his buds cleaned it out. And there it is. You can see the Lenko. Man, what a time capsule. Let's hear what Chauncey has to say. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I'm sure that's it. That looks like um, oh. the holes. Yeah. Well, we did a screwdriver. Okay. I think that, huh? You rules them. Huh? Yeah. They're gonna tell you, yeah, you gotta add these pipes. You gotta add that. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. They never had this kind of screen. I mean, nowadays, no more this kind of screen like this, you know, for keep the chickens out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to run different. I like how those brake lines are kind of looped all over the place. But one of the things that Chauncey told me, and I didn't notice until looking at the pictures close, is that the suspension, the springs are in front of the rear end, not like a lot of the cars are now where they sit behind the rear end. Now you would think with that car in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, with all the salt water, it would be rotted away. But Chauncey told me the car is impeccably clean. There's not one bit of rust on the car. There's the interior cleaned up. He's got new lightning rods for it. He's got the wheelie bars for it. This would be an amazing build for Drag Boss Garage. Right here? Oh. There's nothing. It's just that. Oh, that seems dull. Still had the old cable steering. Not that. Flex cable. And that looks like That's old. lamb suspension, possibly brakes. There's the front end all cleaned up. You can see the motor plate and the mid plate. Fuel cell. So they get the weight bar back here. Right there. Weight bar. Weight bar. Then I get the fuel cell parachute mount. The parachute right there. Mounts back here. This is one extra light. Well, I've seen the special thanks on the rear deck lid. Lee Hunter, Mike Hunter, John Cozzi, Jack Roush, and Tom Spafford. There is at the line. It's beautiful looking. And there it is at Chauncey's Garage. There's a picture of the original hood. A little bit of graphics there of the car. Jack Roush, Hawaii Racing. Parts. Automastics, Billy Takaki. Super Fairmont. Engines by John Cossey. He's well, the Ford go, master. Yeah. Now you know the rest of the story on Dino Don's 1979 Ford Fairmont. The lost pro stalker for over 20 years in a garage in Oahu. Thanks to that man on the bottom of the screen, Chauncey Polis. I appreciate the exclusive for Drag Boss Garage. He has three children. On the left is Brittany with the glasses. On the right is Brandy, and he has a son, Noah. 
they're all motorsports fans. I think Brittany actually races, as does his son. But there's no drag strips now in Oahu, so the car needs to come to the mainland. Like I always say, you never know what you're going to see or learn at Drag Boss Garage. So please like and subscribe, and stay tuned.